I turned it around on you. You did. I was excited and scared. Yeah, you're bold, so you're gonna you'd slide better. I would. We have a little breeze. <laughs> Should I say here or there? Where do you want to sit? Bro, Shan, Bo. Oh, I'm gonna sit here. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Good. This is a good start, right? Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? I haven't been on a stage in 18 months, you guys. Oh. So you're my first. Once before, it was my first con after having a baby, and I had a three-month-old, and so you guys are my first, so I don't know what's going to happen next. Lose a toe? I don't know. I just lost the toe. It's my first con we come back. You're going to go home with one of these pets that we've been yes. watching. Listen, don't tempt me. Bruce, you're going home with Bruce. Little Bruce? Well, is anybody thinking about getting a pet from the Human Society? Come on. Anybody? Oh, we're full up on wow. pets here. Wow. We're going to need everybody Ruthless. to stand up and leave. These hearts of steel out here. Wow, Kansas City's hardcore. Oh wait, we got one over here. One over here. Okay. You got one two weeks ago. Oh, let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Very much. Okay, so here's how this is gonna work. Because I can, I can, we can talk. We can do an hour, no problem. But this is your time. You're going to get more time with her on the floor, but this is your time here together as a group. We're going to talk, we're going to have fun, we're going to have a good time. So what we've got, we have a microphone right over here on this row. We have a, a microphone attendee, attendant, attend, attender, attend, a very tender attendees? person. Attendees? Attendees? Is that a tennis, a tennis person. Who she is going to be uh, handling the microphone for us. If you have a question, we encourage you to go and stand in line. And as we have an opportunity to do so, we will call on you and you'll get to answer, ask your question. Um, because we're trying to keep this all safe, we're only going to have about maybe 10 to 12 people in line at a time. So kind of watch it. If you see the lines getting short, feel free to head on over there. If it's backed up and you got people, you know, stand, then you, know, you might wait a minute. But this is this is your time. So feel free to get in line. Get up and move around as you need to. Um, we, do cartwheels. Yeah. If, this guy. You know. If, if, you, if you do cartwheels, you can be the first person to ask a question. I do want to uh, thank all of you for, I'm going to wear a mask up here. They said, um, you know, I could choose not to, but I have a four-year-old. So on behalf of all parents of small children who can't get vaccinated yet, I want to thank everybody for being cool with wearing masks and all that. Thank you. Thank you. They're real obnoxious and they do a lot of work. We don't want them to get sick too, okay? <laughs> I love them, okay? Don't tell her I said anything like that. <laughs> so I want to say, first of all, I've always been told and I've always believed that if you encounter someone who does something that you appreciate, you should let them know. And I want to say that I appreciate your hustle. And what I mean by that is you have not been the person to sit back and wait for somebody to create something that you love. You are a creator. And I would like to know, I mean, I know you, you worked as an actress and you've done some things, but then what was kind of the impetus for you to become someone who didn't just sit back and wait for roles. Didn't just sit back and say, I really enjoy music. I wish I could get more musical gigs. I really enjoy STEM, geek culture, whatever. I wish there was more of that out there. What was kind of the impetus for you to become a creator, to create your own path and your own, your own shows, your own company, your own channel? What was it that kind of drove you to not sit back on your laurels and wait for somebody to offer you something, but to go out there and create the things that you felt like were missing in the world that you were passionate about? Uh, vengeance? <laughs> uh, strong I, I would say that I have the thought, I thought about that a lot, and I think a lot of it is a little bit of vengeance and spite, but also it's just an innate sense of loving who you are and knowing that you have something to say about the world, and then maybe putting yourself in a circumstance where you're saying it to the wrong people, and it's really easy when you express yourself and share who you are with the world. If you're telling the wrong people that, they're not appreciating it, it's really easy to be like, oh, you're right, I'm wrong, or what I, what matters to me isn't actually important, or, and take it upon yourself. Um, and I think that the revelation of deciding to just make my own thing because I just had to get who I was out into the world and having people respond to that, it drew me to the world that I needed to be in versus the world that I thought I needed to be in. And I think that's a lot of, um, uh, really important for all of us to know, especially with the things that we create, because we're really taught that creation is about results. It's about that 
piece of art you put on your fridge, or it's about the thing you show other people. It really isn't. Creativity is the process of making something. And so when we value ourselves enough to know that our creative process is valid, um, then when we release it into the world, we will find the right people uh, to encourage us and keep us going. Versus like being frustrated and taking it all on ourselves and getting low self-esteem and crying in a car after a bad audition and I could go on and on. <laughs> Very good. Let's go to some of our questions. Uh, go ahead. What's your name? Joangela. Joangela. What's your question? My question is, how was your time on Buffy? Oh, wow. Thank you for asking. So Buffy was my first kind of real job, I think. I think I had done Bring It On again right before that, which is really the peak of my career. <laughs> <laughs> um, so right after I did that, I got Buffy, and it was a very random way I got that show. I went in and they were casting for like four potential slayers. And I remember walking in and reading for the guest star of the week, there was a girl named Eve, who turned out to be a demon at the end of the episode. Spoiler alert. <laughs> she turned out to be a demon at the end and her face peeled off and then we all had to kill her. You know, just standard, beautiful genre fair. Um, and I read for her, but I was so nervous, but for some reason the people in the room, and I think it was Marty Noxon and David Fury were in the room, they were like, why don't you read for this part? And it was the part of Vi. And later I found out that I got cast because the, the part was an uh, Asian American actor and they had written it for an Asian American actor and they couldn't find the person they wanted. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually now I'm like, they should have definitely hired me. <laughs> but I, I ended up getting it because I loved my performance so much because I was so not nervous because they just gave me some sides to read right then. And because I knew that the bar was really low because I had just read the, the words, I actually had a lot of fun and they loved me and they just cast me. So they ended up bringing that character, um, the Asian American character, later in the season. And I think Chow An. So anyway, all, all of us just hung around together and we knitted together. And it was a really fun tight knit group. Yeah, it's a bunch of slayers knitting with needles. I mean, the irony is not lost on me. And we had a great time. We really, I mean, I'm friends with people from that show to this day. I have a podcast with my friend Tom Link, who I met on that show. And we're still friends, you know, this many years later. So uh, for me, I think the genre shows, the sci-fi and fantasy shows I've been on, I have definitely had so much more gratifying um, work, but also forge relationships that I'll have for my, the rest of my life. And that's why I really love being a part of this world. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm sanitizing that microphone and everything. That's safety. I like it. Thank you. Why do you call it on Hello, what's your name? Hi, I'm Sierra. Um, if BioWare were ever to ask you to come back and reprise your role as Talus, would you on Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Look at the rumored Netflix series. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that was, I mean, so if you guys aren't familiar, I actually, I love Dragon Age. I love Bioware. I'm actually streaming, I just finished streaming Mass Effect 1 on my Twitch channel because I love, COVID has turned me into a video game streamer. I know I'm too old for it. You just go to H because I'm going to still do it. Uh, <laughs> no, nobody here go to H because you all understand. Anybody outside of here is like, oh, you're old and you stream video games. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I, I love it and it's so fun. So I love Bioware and, and I got the opportunity many years ago to write a character, create a character for myself and write a web series around her and then they put me in a DLC uh, and that character's Talos. And you can't even find, I think, the, the miniseries anymore except you can buy the DVD but it's not even online anymore. Um, but I put my heart and soul into it and it's so fun. And the DLC they made is just so cool because it highlights an area of the lore that they, they never talked about. And I really wish they had had me back through Dragon Age 4. I wish I could say, I'm not going to play it, but I definitely will play it. <laughs> and maybe they'll consider bringing me back because I think the character had a really interesting lens into a lot of the different types of characters in that thing. And I could just hope that they would want to put some elf ears on me again because I look really good in elf ears. <laughs> right? I mean, all of us do, right? <laughs> Us. Some people might look a little funny with elf ears. I'm sorry. I don't want to limit you, okay? But if you're more of a dwarf kind of person, a dwarfish elf, I mean, listen, you could be a dwarf elf hybrid. That's a fine choice. I don't mean to be limiting anybody. Let's go on. Fair enough. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. 
let's talk about that because I know nobody here wants to talk about the COVID stuff, but let's talk about it. You've always been an avid gamer. What role did gaming play for you in getting through these last 18 months as a fan? I mean, I, uh, I've had a transformative experience with COVID, and I know that a lot of us have, in good and bad ways. I mean, it has been a very, you know, I'd like to say, I, I've been to a lot of therapy, uh, especially for my anxiety over the years, and um, my therapist pointed out something that I, I translate to COVID. When we go through a life transition, like going into high school, getting out of high school, graduating from college, going to college, getting married, getting divorced, getting a new career path. Those transitions are the hardest times in our lives because we're changing our place in the world. And some, and we can struggle a lot with it. It could be good, but it could also be bad. It comes with a lot of anxiety and unknown uh, stuff. And every, but every time we go through one of those transitions, we're like shedding a skin like a snake, right? And we don't know what we'll become afterwards, but we will become a stronger version of ourselves. And so I want to encourage everybody, I know we all have different circumstances, but if you can look back at this time where we were cut off from a lot of things and find some positive things and identify the negative things and then envelop those things back into your life in a very curated way, we can all move forward in a more healthy way. So like for me, work-life balance was totally out of that. And being at home made me realize that I don't need to be, you know, on the front of everything. I don't need to be everywhere everybody wants me to be. I don't need to say yes to everything that people ask me because they want to, you know, use me for something this or they have seen an opportunity for me here. I had a real hard time balancing that and spending 18 months at home with my baby, spending more time with her, figuring out how to grow a, you know, a really strange looking cucumber, <laughs> eating way too many cupcakes that I made from scratch, thank you very much. <laughs> Um, all of that, and also just re abandoning some of the career things that I decided to do because people thought it was probably something that would be cool if I did, but I didn't really enjoy, and embracing some of the things that I had left behind because they weren't Hollywood friendly, like streaming, doing podcasts, doing my newsletters, doing little projects, writing, I'm, I have a couple book proposals that I have out there now, so, you know, really diving into my own voice and being allowing myself to let go of the things that I, I used to think I should do has been really healthy for me. And so, again, there might have been some, a lot of us have had to struggle a lot in many ways, emotionally, financially, personally, everything. Losing people, like, it's just a really hard time, but you know, if we can all look at it in a way to grow into a better version of ourselves, at least we can take some positivity forward because we're going forward no matter what, right? Very good. Very good. Let's go to our next question. What's your name? Uh, I'm Cleve Snell from your Discord. Oh, Cleve Snell! Hi! <laughs> Anybody in my Discord knows Cleve Snell? Cleve Snell, you're awesome. Please come say hi to me. I want to talk to you. Okay. I want to talk to you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked this, uh, you, you had just mentioned your podcast, and I asked this question for felicitations, but I'll ask it here. <laughs> Um, you have the Undressing the Witcher podcast with Tom Blank. Yep. And uh, so, uh, you uh, in the Witcher, he finds the uh, the gin and releases the gin. Uh huh. And uh, you get three wishes. What would you wish for? Oh, <laughs> a thousand more wishes. <laughs> That's like the Encyclopedia Brown <laughs> answer, right? Um, if I were going to wish for something, boy oh boy, I would wish for everyone to be... I, okay, the first thing I would wish is for everybody to be okay with other people being themselves. That's one thing I would wish. I think respecting other people, but also respecting that other people are different and that's okay, um, is super important for us as a species, right? And, um, so I would wish for that. I would wish for, um, well, uh, oh God, this is really, because if I do something petty, then it feels, this is, this is too much pressure. <laughs> Nobody's recording this. You can be as petty as you want. It's fine. It's never going to be that. Like I can have just gold fingernails? Like you want, really? 
I would waste a I would, wish. I would take gold finger now. Are you kidding? That I could touch. I mean, the problem with wishes, everybody knows if you get a wish, then it's going to backfire on you. You know what I'm saying? Like you wish to turn everything into gold and suddenly have a gold cat. And then what? That cat doesn't puke on the rug, which is nice, but you don't have a live cat anymore. So. <laughs> Um, wow, well, I guess I would wish for, uh, I really, I would wish that everybody appreciate, um, our environment more because I am always touched when I walk in the forest and just the, the diversity, I guess to me, another kind of a diversity wish in that, that we, we appreciate that, the wonderful things that the earth has given us, you know, all the different kinds of animals, they're worth preserving, they're work, worth working around and not consuming as much to, you know, I feel so guilty when every single time I throw out any plastic, I'm like, well, you're not getting to heaven now. Like, I really think that. <laughs> and then I know it's a, that's a little upset. That's a little dumb. But at the same time, you know, we, we have become a society that is really dependent on consuming things. And for me, like, my whole goal is for everybody to embrace that we all have inherent awesomeness in us that we need to let out, not just consume other people's stuff, uh, including plastic bags that will send me to hell one day. <laughs> and then the third one is that my baby wants to be around me when she wakes and grows up. Because <laughs> she's so cute now, she's four, and she's like, Mama, I love you more than anything in the world. And when she says that, typical Felicia, I'm like, when you're 14, you're not going to say that to me. <laughs> so I guess that's... <laughs> Spoilers, they don't. <laughs> they... What? <laughs> I, I know, it's crazy. Wait, you're 14, you have a 14 year old? I have a uh, 17 and a... 15. And they don't say I love you to you? No, they say, okay, Dad. Okay, Dad. <laughs> oh my God, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> the good news is, if she's saying okay, Dad, to you, then you know it's not like, okay, she's clearly not all there. So. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, Claire's not, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You. We appreciate you being here. You can stand up. Lower, okay. lower, how dare you, Boston? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, I'm a theater kid uh, from Nixon, Missouri. Woo. And I grew up with you from Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. <laughs> Thank you. And I wanted to know what brought you into the musical realm and if you'd ever want to go back. Um, my mom decided when she watched a TV show about little kids playing violin, and she was like, hey, you should do that. You have a weird thumb. Because my thumb <laughs> doesn't straighten all the way. You'll see, like, <laughs> I have like a shortened ligament here. I mean, everybody has to have a, a you know, I mean, I don't know. Does everybody have a shortened ligament somewhere? <laughs> no. Um, so anyway, she's like, oh, that makes sense. You put that around a violin. I don't, but this is my mom we're talking about, so it isn't, one plus one doesn't always add the two with her. Uh, I, I love her so much, but she's a little wacky girl. Um, so she put me in violin lessons when I was like almost three years old. And so that kind of, started a trajectory for, and then she homeschooled me, so I was so bored at home, I just practiced a lot. And that ended up, you know, really it was just boredom. Uh, and when, my, when we would move around, I was homeschooled, so when we moved around, I would go and be like, forest girl number seven in Oklahoma and all that stuff, because that was really the only way I got out of the house. I just, my dad was like, you gotta get a real degree. And I was like, here, here's a math degree, now I'm going to Hollywood. <laughs> Don't do that. It wasn't well planned out. I mean, I guess it turned out okay for me, but, you know, uh, I wouldn't highly recommend that, that career path. <laughs> but yeah, Dr. Horrible is one of the highlights of my career, and it's because the music is so wonderful, and it'll last forever. I think if you, you can't underestimate how music will last, you know, it resonates, and it doesn't matter when it was written, it really will just pass on. I mean, hopefully you grew up with me, which I don't, you know, I don't take that as an insult. I'm old now. Uh, but it, it, it is one of those things that it is universal. Music is kind of like our universal language and you can transcend so many things with it. Thank Good you. luck with your own theater. Thank you. And with your math degree, don't forget the second part of that <laughs> equation. <laughs> Hello. It's all right. Take your time. But no. Take your time. You'd much rather. Still thinking time. about those wishes. I'm like, was that really a good use of wishes? Like the pressure of that was a lot. It was intimidating. I was like, how can I encompass this and still be self-centered at the same time? <laughs> okay, I did that pretty well. Hey. What's your name? Uh, Alexander. Alexander. Hi. Hey. Um, that's what my teenagers sound like when I say I love I you. I know. <laughs> I love you too. 
Did you talk about your time on Hello from the Magic Tavern? Oh, Hello from the Magic Tavern. If you guys don't know this podcast, it is so funny. It is an improv comedy about some uh, a guy who gets sucked through a fast food restaurant into a magical land of food. And it's a bunch of improv actors from Chicago. I was such a big fan of them. I actually tried to get them to, I wanted to start a whole podcast company with Geek and Sundry, and they were one of the first people, and they wanted to do it, but then, I can't go into any corporate details. It didn't happen. Uh, but it was, a, it, wasn't, it was no lack of me wanting to do it. And still, I just stayed such a big fan of them. And so when, they knew I was a big fan, and when they came to LA to do get some guest stars, I was like, let me, I was like, it was on the weird plexiglass that they put in front of us, so I'm like, let me in. Let me on your podcast. <laughs> So I've done, I think, three episodes of Jen Levy of the Red, and I'm a very nasty character. I mean, a nasty, funny character, but um, they inevitably do a lot of, it's not for kids, I'll just let you know. <laughs> but it's really, really funny. I highly recommend it to anybody. Are you a big fan? Yeah, I'm like caught up. It's like 330 episodes, so it's a commitment, man. The way you talk is very, yeah, I say too many. <laughs> just once. <laughs> No big deal. Thank you very much Thanks. for the question, Alison. That was an okay question. It was alright. Her answer is alright. Hi, I'm Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Sorry. During your time on uh, Supernatural, uh, you played a pretty geeky character, obviously. Did they uh, consult you on the references that you make, or were those just all off the top of your head? You know, I, I love, you know, I wrote. If you watch my show, The Guild, I wrote everything on that. So all of that writing was me. I love you, The Guild. Oh, thank you. So any geeky reference in that was me. And I have a new project that I've written all myself, and it will hopefully be out probably early next year, but um, that's all me. But for Supernatural, I just showed up and I read the lines. And what is wonderful about that is that Robbie Thompson um, is the writer. And he, he wrote every Charlie episode leading up to my season uh, 10 turn. <laughs> you know what happened. Um, except for that last one where I, you know, spoiler alert, departed. Uh, but then I came back later. Anyway, so he is like the most genuine nerd ever. So the Lion Cat t-shirt, they made that just because he loves Saga, the comic book series. And every reference was to him because he was genuinely Charlie, but a dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, so I just want to commend him. He is such a talented writer, and he's actually the writer who is doing the prequel, The Winchesters. He's the one who's in charge of it. So when I spread that, I was like, oh, this prequel is going to be actually really awesome. <laughs> so I'm really excited for it because he genuinely loves Supernatural, but he also is in touch with uh, geek, geek, to, uh, geek work, the world in, in a really like super authentic way. So I have high hopes for it, and he's just an awesome person. So. Every word he ever gave me was written down, and I just was able to embody it because I read it and I was like, "I, it me, it me." <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you that was called a smattering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a smattering. So, do you enjoy when you are playing someone who has kind of like geeky proclivities, or do you enjoy playing more? I don't want to say against type, but someone who's less. Geeky, maybe than yourself. Which is which? Do you enjoy more? You I mean, like I'm in the wheelhouse, or do you like stretching outside of it? Well, the, the thing is, um, I have I'm in a weird position to have been rejected my whole career, and then I made an opportunity. I mean, you know, I got some roles like Buffy, but they were never like major roles. And then I was so uh, frustrated with my opportunities that I was faced with in Hollywood because I was trying to break into more mainstream stuff, and I didn't see myself as a as a person or a character. Um, in Hollywood. I didn't see that anyone was going to understand me. Uh, whenever I said, I have a math degree and I love video games, they would be like, okay. They didn't know what to do with me because there was no role that I would fit. So I was frustrated. They were probably frustrated because people did think I was, a, you know, a cool actress, but there was no role for me. So when I created my role for myself to show people, hey, this is who I am. I exist. A lot of women and people like me exist and you're not showing us authentically. Uh, that was the reason for writing the guild and then people started seeing what I was doing and then casting me pretty much as that so Eureka um, They created uh, they, they wrote that character with me in mind same thing with Supernatural. I was this Felicia Day type 
they wrote that. And, and then Sarah Gamble, who was the showrunner, was like, well, let's try to get Felicia Day. Uh, which, thank goodness, they did. Because I've seen breakdowns for voices for Felicia Day types, and they called and they said, oh no, we don't want you. <laughs> for a story. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, it, I think that it would be, I actually have taken a hiatus from acting since Supernatural. I, I left my agents because again, I was kind of with people who I, I knew that didn't understand me and I was frustrated and they were frustrated. I was like, and, uh, for a year before COVID. And so I haven't really done a lot of acting since then for almost two, two and a half years now. So I just got new headshots. If you come by my table, you'll see them. They're real pretty. Uh, I promise I didn't retouch them much. Uh, and I'm about to go out and get an agent, um, but I'm actually excited to do some things I've never done before. I'd love to be a bad guy. I would love to be, you know, my, okay, but my dream, this is my dream role, and I'm just gonna put it out there in the universe because you just have to put it in your you know, universe if you have a dream. I wanna be, here's my pitch, a coroner, but for supernatural creatures. Uh. <laughs> right? Right? That's a good idea. There's no show out there for me, but I might just, I might have to, I don't know. So, so, how, so how would that work? Give us a scene, break down a scene for us. Okay, uh, okay, so... so we've, got, we've got something on the slab. Okay, great. So then you're like, uh, you're the detective, the, the craggy detective who has a... I'm gonna retire in like three days. And... You're gonna retire in three days. So you're gonna, you're gonna be eaten, eaten by a monster suit. Okay, okay, but your partner would be like... Wait a minute, hold on. Did you just write me off? I mean... <laughs> Okay, so wait, you got sucked back in. I've got, yeah, they always suck me back in. They okay, they sucked back you in. back in, all right. But you're three, you're like the James Garner. You live in a, you live in a small spaceship, not a, not a trailer. Okay. For, for uh, Rockford Files, I've seen half an episode, so I know. Very I'd be like, oh, okay, guys, I'm so sorry. I was busy um, with my holograph girlfriend. Um, so <laughs> basically, I found Mother Kraken's body. We have four hearts, but somebody's taken the third heart, and it seems like they burned a uh, Nordic rune in the third heart. Oh, I'm sorry, that's just my spaghetti from this morning. Let's try something up. So that's what I would do, okay? okay. So, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd autopsy strange animals. I would have, like, maybe a squid body from the, from the waist down, you know, because maybe I... As one does in that role. Yeah. Maybe, I, well, I'm a mermaid, but I, I, got te I can't find my, my, my tail, so, like, maybe I have that quest in me that we need to find my mermaid tail. <laughs> You're looking forward to the Kraken? Yeah, I'm just like, where is it? Oh boy. Uh, so that's my pitch. It's not good yet. <laughs> but I feel like there's something there. <laughs> also, the coroner doesn't have to work every day, and they don't go out into the field um, until somebody's trying to break into the station for some evidence, like maybe a chosen one child that we have in the lockup or something. And so the vampire hordes would try to come in. And then they, I would have to fight them, but suddenly I knew jujitsu. It's like <laughs> just a secret thing nobody knew that. I was flying here and there. Yeah, Cyber X, that's my name because I'm half robot, half <laughs> robot. Robot, robot, Yeah, yeah, of course. This, it's not going the direction I would have thought. Well, well, yeah. Fell, we'll uh, you know? Okay, we'll workshop it. Yes, go ahead, what's your name? My name is Matt. Hi, Matt. Um, I was wondering if you could be a vampire, werewolf, with some kind of supernatural creature, which one would you want to be? I would be a half robot, half super <laughs> <laughs> lost their tail and secretly know jiu jitsu, okay? Matt, did you just get here? Did you miss this whole bit? Did you miss it? Matt, I love your accent. Where are you from? Are you from Kansas City, Missouri? I'm from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Oh, yeah, I knew it. I knew you had an Arkansas. I was gonna, I was gonna, because you get that, it's like real hard. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's cute. Thank you. Thanks for being here, but not actually listening to what's going on the stage. <laughs> I love you. You're awesome. Okay, you are too. They're not all winners. I mean, <laughs> he's a winner. Matt's he's a, a, no, I, he's a winner. No, Matt's a winner. This is this. Exactly. Oh, no, this was, this it's was, yeah, so we got a, I'd like to apologize to Matt. You gotta work that. <laughs> that. What's your name? Uh, Tom Shockey. Hey Tom, how are you? Uh, if you could be in Marvel, who would you be? <gasps> a corner? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a I, I had 
a crush on Quincy as a young child. Is that that's <laughs> very strange? But my mom would watch it, and very I was specific. like, Quincy. He's yes. so he was a corner who went out into the field. Yes. So that's more work than I want. I don't want to be number one or two on the call sheet. I saw how Jared and Jensen worked. That's too much work. <laughs> Just put me down four, five, six. You know, I'm on the poster because I've never been on someone else's poster. But You're always a second act. Like, oh hey, there's exactly, you. exactly. Um, what was your question? <laughs> oh, Marvel. You know, here's the thing. I have, this is what COVID has done for me. It has also made me accept myself as I am. And my current body is full of cupcakes. I ate so <laughs> And I'm like trying to work out, you know, I'm just like, I'm not, I don't want to work that hard to get a new unitar. I like the way I look. I got, I got a little to talk and I love it. So. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to work hard enough to be able to be in one of their glam outfits. You know what I'm saying? So I would be. I'd like to be maybe. Boy, what else do you do at Mar at Marvel? I mean, like some of the agents of Shield characters, they were cool. Like they're just tangential. I, I mean, I could be an agent of some kind. I look good in a suit. I do look good in a suit. <laughs> so you put me in a suit. I don't care what planet I'm on. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna do good. So, uh, yeah. That's not an answer, but that's all you get. <laughs> Unless you know somebody, Tom, in which yeah, case... Yeah, hook me up? I know people, but I don't... You do? Oh, well. well, you know, I honestly wanted to be Squirrel Girl only because I just wanted to justify my overbite to one person. <laughs> <laughs> what about Will Wheaton? Will Wheaton? I mean... He is awesome. He, I mean, wow. He, <laughs> he could definitely be a superhero. Although, again... You all don't understand how hard as an actor. I got a trainer. It was my birthday present to get eight weeks of a trainer, right? So then he came to my house and twice a week. And, I, you know, I got, I, I can do one push-up now, and now we're over, and I'm going to just be great, you know, because I can't keep a trainer coming to my house. But I did that, and I was like, oh, this is why everybody looks amazing on TV. They have people to come and sculpt their bodies for them and deprive them of food. I don't want to do that anymore. I love eating. I love the way, you know, my pants semi-fit. It's fine. We're good. But the amount of work it goes, like, I'm sure all of you, I mean, some people have, uh, you know, have some weight loss goals in one time in their life. And we all know that the extra 10%, like, from, once you get, like, 90% of it done, the, the last 10% is 90% of the work, right? And so it's easy to be like, just don't do that 10%. <laughs> Whatever. So, long story short, just let me sit down, wear a suit, and Will and I can be in an office somewhere, and then we'll be upset, we'll eat craft service, whatever we want, and occasionally I'll kick an alien in the face. That's all I want to do. Okay? Or the corridor thing. We're going to workshop it. Alright. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tom. Hello. 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 That's how you know it's clean and crap. It is really. Listen, I have... I have in the past, that's why I work with a mic too, even though I'm the first one to use this, I have used mics where it's clear that somebody had bacon. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> okay. What's your name? Hi, my name is Allie. Hi, Hi Allie. Allie. Out of everything that you filmed on Supernatural, what was your favorite episode to film? The LARP of the New Girl. I mean, <laughs> did anybody watch the episode where I was dressed up as a queen? And they made custom leather pants, which is the only way to make leather pants, y'all, for me. <laughs> I'm really sad that I somehow didn't get that outfit. I think they must have, like, auctioned all of the outfits off or something. So somebody owns that outfit. Um, and just congratulations on your custom leather pants that will not fit you. Because they were made for my body. Um, but it was so fun. It was so well written. And there were so many inside jokes. And I got to... I made out with a fairy, I had a tent. They made a, um, a oil painting of me that the production actually gave me, so I have that oil painting in my house. <laughs> it's not hung up, okay? <laughs> Except in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it isn't. That would be creepy, right? If you went into somebody's house and be like, nice oil painting of yourself, that would, you would know you're okay with it? Do you have one in your house of you? <clears throat> Other paintings of yourself? Go to her house. <laughs> Sounds cool. Now I'm going to start hanging stuff up everywhere. <laughs> awesome. Anyway. A little bit of hope. Uh, growing up, I was always my dad was my best friend. So you have a kind of 
a way to be able to bond with your daughter too. So. Oh, so you 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 were you were kind to your parents as you were growing up. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. See, you that still said I love you to my dad. So. Aww. Oh. You need to raise your child like I not, Clearly not what I did. <laughs> did he give you too many Lego sets? Because that's what I do with my kid. No, I buy him Legos. You buy him Legos? <laughs> this is the perfect relationship. <laughs> wow, can you do a seminar? <laughs> I think he would be better at leading that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's a two-way street, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have got 15 to 20 minutes left, so if you haven't gotten mm -hmm. in line... We got a lot, we got a lot of work. Guys, we got time to fill. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're going over a little bit, because I guess the, the panel after this is not um, there. Or we can just end early. You don't want to do that, do you? Oh. No, let's chat. I want to hear about you guys. Mushroom head over here. What's going on? I want to hear more about the paintings that she has. I know. How do you have herself. paintings of yourself everywhere? Did you go, go to... Can everybody hear her? So you were all about self-portraits, right? Oh, here. You, you were all about, I mean, I love that. I actually, one of the exercises, and I have a book, wait, okay, you, uh, you talk. Oh, you read my book? Yeah, I read it, and then I um, also did presentation using it. <gasps> oh, did, you, did you get an A? Um, it was for, like, development of other people. So oh, okay. So it they, wasn't, like, graded. Oh, well, I would have given you an A. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, we might want to watch it before you actually like, graded them, because I'm not very good at presenting. You know what? All that negative self-talk makes me want to slap you, okay? <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. You're wonderful. Um, in, my, in my book, I have a book, um, and I have copies of it, if you want to get a copy all, uh, at, my, at my table. It's called Embrace Your Weird, and I did it after, I wrote that book after I had a baby, because I literally lost my mind a little bit, but I also lost my sense of self. And I wrote that book because I love self-help books, but I didn't read any out there that were really funny and especially more geeky. And I was like, you know what? I think I can do this and use it as a tool to work through who I am. So literally every step of that book is me re rebuilding myself from scratch, but also hopefully helping everybody else rebuild themselves from scratch. And I think it would be, it's a good thing right now to do because we're all rebuilding ourselves from scratch after COVID. Like, favorite like time travel setups where they just sent their memories back in time so yes if you could send your memories back in time what area of your history would you do it and what would you have changed using okay if i could send my memory or my consciousness am i like am, am i going into another person's body or am i like physically in another time you're sending yourself back into your previous body so oh okay so i uh, we're, we're kind of believing in reincarnation kind of the way you read the day where uh, he had the memories where he lost his, uh, and I'm pretending his name is driving crazy, uh, sent himself back in time, saved his wife, and created that alternate timeline, essentially. Oh, okay, so it's contemporary. It's a different version of ourselves, but contemporaneous. Yeah. Because, quite frankly, as a woman, time travel sucks. All right? <laughs> we're living in a good time right now, but, uh, you know, all sorts of things were not cool in the past. So, um, okay, so alternate timeline Felicia. You're saying, what what alternate timeline would I want to be in? Yeah. Well, um, what part of your own history, using the knowledge you have now, would you have changed so you went back to 20 years? Oh, okay, I'm going to say something super cheesy, <laughs> which I actually wrote in my book, that I wouldn't want to go back and change anything. All my mistakes are perfect because if I didn't make every single choice that I made now, who knows if I'd have the baby that I have now? And she's like the most wonderful thing in my life. And who knows if that particular egg and sperm would ever meet and make a, the, the person that she is. So honestly, in that moment in time, that's what all my life, you know, led up to. Is that cheesy? I'm starting to tear up. <laughs> Thank you for your question. I can remember one bad night with a deep dish pizza. You <laughs> if I could go back in time. Wait, did you puke or was it the poops? Oh, it was, it was... No, I want specifics right now. It was bad. It was bad. I'll, I'll wait if you want to. No, no, no. We'll I mean, really, we'll talk about it. Yeah, I'm Roberta. Please um, save us, Roberta. Yes. Uh, Pick him, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Please save me, Roberta. Well, I'm a huge fan of Critical Role. Woo, um, you're amazing. Yeah. I just want to thank you for your part in helping that be a thing. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you had any memories, uh, special memories from when you guest starred on the... Uh, 
episode of Critical Role that you were on is Lyra. Yeah, that, um, so Critical Role is an, I'm sure everybody's familiar with it, but if you aren't, it's a D&D group online. They are a huge phenomenon, and the reason why they started screaming was because I had a, a whim. <laughs> Um, I love D&D. I played it for many, many years before I even did the guild. I was in a D&D campaign that lasted like four years from my sketch comedy group. And I loved it so much. And after I sold Geek and Sundry, it was very, I mean, if you read my biography, you know that everything was so much, it was so stressful. And um, it was really hard on me. And all I wanted to do was have my own personal thing going on. I started streaming on the side after I sold Geek and Sundry to Legendary. And um, I loved it so much because it was everything I wished YouTube was. Like YouTube, there was no content moderation possible. There isn't really any now. And there wasn't that sense of community in the comments that I really, really desired. And really was what made me keep going to book on the Guild because we had a little chat program on watchtheguild.com where everybody, you know, it was like a couple hundred people, but I was like, I know them all, they're so supportive. And really, this is, this is awesome. This is why I wanna make more episodes. Um, and so YouTube, making a YouTube channel, it was like the opposite. It was so, it was a very uh, rude awakening to being kind of dogpiled and hated on. Because that's, you know, when you get to a certain level of recognition, that's when you're on a larger platform, you get more love, but you also get more hate. And I, I, didn't, I wasn't prepared to deal with it. Uh, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't have the tools in my body to not take every negative comment personally, especially on so many videos we release. So, Having Twitch and being able to like ban people immediately and just have the people who are who are awesome in uh, chat was a revelation. And so then I went, of course, I turned everything into. I was like, we could do this for the company. We could have a Twitch channel. And so I persuaded um, them to let me start a Twitch channel. And I was like, okay, uh, the first things we definitely need to do, we have to do live DMV because I know this is an awesome idea. I know people would love it. I can't do it because I was on a, a couple of TV shows at the time and busy with so many other things. Uh, so instead of like bringing the guild on to do it, I was like, oh, my friend Ashley Johnson has some friends and they're voice actors, so that will be like some cross promo because they do video game voices, and I think that will actually work out. Never seen the play, never had any idea, and uh, you know, somebody from Geek Century watched them. He's like, they're magical. I was like, great, put them on. I was riveted every week with them. I was like, oh, they're stars, you know. Um, and I was a huge fan. So when they asked me to be guest star, I was like, yes, please. <laughs> and it's just what makes them really special is that they're just great actors. And not only that, because I'm sure we've all seen celebrity D and D games. They're fun, but it's the rapport between them because they are genuine friends. Really sets it apart. You can't buy that kind of chemistry. You can pay all the actors in the world to go together, and if you don't have genuine We've all seen shows where it's like, those people did not like each other on the camera, <laughs> right? And we brought, uh, there were shows like Supernatural, it's like, those guys are obviously really like brothers. And it makes the difference. That is where we see that authenticity. And that's what Critical Role has. So believe me, I left my company when I had my baby, and they left and started their own thing. And they have built an empire that I have, you know, eclipses anything that I've ever done business-wise. Uh, and I just admire everything they do, because they do it with integrity, and they still have their artistry first and foremost. Um, so yeah, they're awesome. Watch them. They're good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Hi. I'm Tara. Hi, Tara. Hi, Kara. Tara, with a T. Yes. Parrot. <laughs> Parrot time. Oh, Tara. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay, nobody gets it right the first time. I thought you said carrot with a T as a carrot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so we're the same age. I think I got like five months on here or something like that. Okay, good. 27 also. Congratulations. Yeah, 27 is great. With a few years experience. So um, growing up, I'm sure we watched a lot of the same TV shows. So I just want to know, what was your favorite Saturday morning cartoon? <gasps> Okay, I watched a lot of old TV for some reason because I'm 80 inside, but I love the Herculoids. Okay? Luke and Lee. What are they? Who knows? How do, how do they eat? What do they cook? Who knows? I love the Herculoids. I love, um, boy, they're Saturday market. I mean, I love, boy. I think, uh, My Little Pony. I was really into that. Um, One of my favorites. Yeah. I mean, Rainbow Bright, She-Ra, She-Ra is really 
really good. Now it's all coming back to me. I love uh, Looney Tunes. I was a big fan of uh, the Roadrunner. And I still, now I've introduced that one to my daughter. And I'm like, you know what? You're going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> I started to watch see my kids too, too. They love it. Yeah. You know, the good thing about uh, good programs is they, you don't, you don't have to be new. I mean, she loves watching Mary Poppins. Let me tell you, that show, that movie is weird. If you watch it now, there's a talking parrot. Like, her umbrella talks. Which is like, those are the things you don't remember as a kid, and you watch it again, you're just like, whoa, this is, this is strange. <laughs> awesome. And just one thing, the kids stop loving you for a while, but they come back to it. How do they stop they say. that part? Yeah. Well, <laughs> they just, it's not cool. Yeah. Not is cool. it a developmental thing? Because when she does that, I'm going to just tell her to move out. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they, I have four. They don't all do it. They don't all do they it. They all do it. So they might love you forever, or they might forget for a couple of years. Boy, Can we boy. make love cool again? Can we like get the teenagers to be like, that's okay? Mom, I mean, I despise adore. my mother as a kid. Yeah. Like you just want to be. But I think it's like I think that I mean, if you look at history, like we we really should be like. I mean, they used to like apprentice kids at eight. I'm not I'm not encouraging child labor to come back, <laughs> but I am saying that you know. Uh, Agency. I actually read this really interesting article about giving children agency and the way that we, the educational system gives people tools, gives kids tools, but don't give them any tools to do anything with them, right? And they get really frustrated. And so that's why, you know, whatever you can do to allow them to channel their abilities into something to make things and do things, even if it's like uh, a little job, or, you know, like, uh, I think it's super important. Uh, and I'm not a child psychologist, so I'm just talking right now, but... <laughs> Take just, all this yeah, exactly. I just wanted to love me. To the mind. Yeah, exactly. Well, child labor, let's bring it back. That's that's the conclusion of this. No, no. Do not quote me. Don't post that on TikTok, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Karen, Tara, Karen. <laughs> I think this will probably be our last question. So really? I think so. No, let's do it for you. Do you want to do it? Okay, how many Come do you on, man. Three. There's three people. If you, I've been told that you will not be our last question. Go ahead, what's your name? Ah, hi, I'm Mark. Hello, Mark. I have a question. Well, first I have a statement, Felicia. Thank you for being awesome. Oh, You're like you. Robin Williams. I have never seen you in a bad role. Oh, the only reason you. I even have to log in with Twitch. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. But here is my question. Um, I know you're a big gamer. You always have been. Um, I have always made the joke that Diablo 2 is a game that is better than sex because I spent my teenage years playing it instead of trying to have sex. I was wondering Fair. if you had a game like that as well. I suspect I know which one it might be, but I was just curious. What game I would rather have you play than have sex? Well, just anyone that you've enjoyed as much as sex or something like that. <laughs> wow, who says I've ever enjoyed sex? So apparently... <laughs> That's not anything I'm trying to find out. I'm just, I, think, I was thinking more entertainment level. I think Tara and Karen Carrot was our last question of the day, so... <laughs> I will, okay, well, I have to tell you, the game I'd love to get lost in, and, uh, I mean, I don't sweat during, but, uh, <laughs> you're so awful, this question is awful. I'm sorry, I did not think No, it's okay. okay, I mean, I know too much about you now, but that's cool. <laughs> I mean, I certainly... I'm a share. No, 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 I do. I love open world games, and I love getting lost in sort of uh, open world. I have to say Skyrim. And they are releasing a legendary edition of Skyrim with fishing. Ooh, next I didn't know week. that. Did you see that? I just saw oh, that. I'll be checking that out. Thank you. Oh, boy, man. Okay, fishing in Skyrim's got to be better than sex. Okay? I'll just let you know. I was expecting WoW from your work on the guild. Well, WoW well, for sure. I mean, WoW well, was wonderful because it was a group thing. And I don't want to go into details, but it's not my thing. You know. <laughs> I, want, I want to say I appreciate Mark for being here today. <laughs> time. Mark, we love you. Well, Teenage thanks, Mark, Mark did not love his parents. Thanks, Mark. All right, two more questions. Hi, I'm Vera. Hi, Vera. Um, I was wondering, so I know in the last couple of months you started playing uh, some GTA roleplay. Yeah. I wanted to know what your thoughts are roleplaying in that environment, like a voice RP environment versus like D&D, because I play a lot of like GTA roleplay and that sort of thing, but I also play a lot of D&D. So 
So I don't know what you thought. No, I think it was really fun. I kind of stopped playing because there were some problematic role-playing things in there. I felt like, uh, and I think this is something that sort of, there were some people who were playing certain characters that I thought were not optimal, you know, in a way that I felt were uh, a little bit racist, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I think that's a, it's, it's a hard thing, and I think if you, but then I tweeted something and people brought up a lot of good points about why like, we shouldn't bar people from playing cross race in D&D &D and things like, so like, it's a moving target and it's all like, it seems to me like the GTA environment because it is sort of stereotypical in its portrayal of inner cities and things like that, is more likely to be uh, borderline offensive or fall into being offensive. So, uh, I, I had a really good time playing with my other friends in it, and then now I've moved on to Fortnite because I'm obsessed with Fortnite. Oh, I'm really bad at Fortnite. I'm obsessed with Fortnite. Um, if you have a 12-year-old, they will kick my ass. A 9-year-old will probably kick my ass. But I will tell you that Fortnite is my new passion because it's really fun. And the guild and I, every Sunday night we play together, the guild, um, and we, you know, we just love playing together. So. I will say that GTA is really fun, and I love the fact that people can get into that improv and role playing thing. And people do funny things in there, and I loved it. It was like three months that I played really hardcore. And but you know, my friend group kind of fell apart. And at a certain point, when you're logging into work at a burger shop, it feels a little reductive. Like, what am I doing with my life? But at the end of the day, when you race a car off a bridge and you you know explode in a ball of fire, that's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, so yeah, good luck to anybody um, doing it, and I think it should be, it's, it's an interesting subculture that I would, I'm really excited to have played in, and I hope to play it again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Last question. Woo! Better not be about video game sex, okay? <laughs> Don't pull a mark on me, buddy. <laughs> mark to... Hi. Hi. So, what's I was... Oh, name? Yes. Uh, Gannon. Okay, hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I was actually wondering what the development process was for the guild from meeting everybody to writing it to filming it every week. Uh, just what was involved in Okay. Uh, years of uh, self-loathing, <laughs> false starts, working on it and then crying, uh, playing too much video game, law, uh, getting a self-help group of women who were in the industry to make me feel guilty about only getting epic loot every week and not actually working in my career, crying more, giving myself a deadline to write a bad script, crying over that script, realizing it wasn't as bad as I thought, getting notes, making it better, everyone rejecting it because nobody knew about video games, my friend convincing me to cut it up and make it into a show, and then um, uploading it and realizing the world is amazing online. So that's really what happened, and I will tell you, it was the hardest writing process ever. I have just gotten to the point this year where I have gotten my anxiety under control with medication, and also a lot of just really disciplined sleep, actually, has made sleep and diet and exercise has made a huge difference in my life, as well as medication, which helped me like blunt my anxiety disorder a little bit. Um, so that has really helped me be able to write badly better, which is the key to all writing, or any creative. You have to be brave enough to write, do something really, really badly. Because if you aren't brave enough to do that, you're not creating for the right reason, because you're thinking about the result, and you're probably thinking about the result being received by other people. That's not what creativity is about. Creativity is about the process of you figuring out how to work, figuring out what you want to say, why do you want to make this thing. And so, if I would challenge anybody, if you want to be a creative person, really examine why you want to be creative and how you can be creative in an active way and not focus on the result of it. Because then you'll really let yourself bloom and let your personality out of the world. And remember, only you are that person. Only you can write a paragraph about a cat the way that you write it, right? So I think we're really obligated to be able to let that out in the world and balance our consumerism with creativity, which will make you feel more inspired and more fulfilled. That's just my personal opinion. And I will leave you with that cheese. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. And of course, we've got tons of guests, vendors, cosplayers, celebrities, creators here all weekend long. Get out and mingle, have a good time. Stop by and say hi, Felicia Teller, and how much you appreciate her being here this weekend. All right. One more time, round of applause, Felicia.